Hello, and a very, very warm welcome to a very, very special episode of the Gestalten podcast. I am, my name is Martin, I'm the managing director here at Concept House, and I have, not Eric with me this time, I have a lovely chap that I've known for, you know, quite a few years by now already, and we want to talk about a very, very special topic, but first of all, before we get to the topic, um, hello and welcome, Quirin Friedel. Hello. Who is the, is that right, the head of visualization? And if if you want to say that. Yeah. So my name is Quirin Friedel and me and my team, we take care about the visualization at Byton. That's pretty much what we're going to start off with. And before we start talking about our topic, which will be VR within a design department, I want to talk a little bit about Byton first, mm -hmm. because um, Byton is about like, what, two and a half, three years old now? Um, two and a half, yeah. 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 Have you guys have shown two cars so far? It's two show cars, in exactly. That sense. And uh, so, yeah, tell us, tell us a little bit more about yourself, what you've done before, so mm -hmm. that we get a little bit of an idea, and also, um, you know, how is your journey at Byton going so far? Very well, very well, yeah. So, uh, I studied industrial design, and I've always been three D guy. Wanted to do three D graphics all my life. And after university, I started at a big service supplier, working a lot for BMW, also modeling. And then I made a very interesting journey to RTT, working uh, in configuration pipelines for Volkswagen and Audi. And then we started producing a lot of augmented reality apps and virtual reality apps uh, in the B2B world. And from there, I took over the job at Python, mm -hmm. which also came together by doing a virtual reality presentation for basically the first very important meeting at Python, mm -hmm. showing the first digital prototype. And yeah, that went very well. And the board said, we want to have that all the time. And <laughs> since then... Uh, yeah, that's my occupation and it's a very interesting job because it's giving yourself a lot of opportunities, a lot mm -hmm. of creative freedom to shape uh, yeah, an OEM in the making, yeah. which is a very exciting journey. Cool. And just to give the, the people a little bit more of an insight on what is your day-to-day -day job? I mean, obviously you have a team with you, you know, you lead a number of people in that regard, but what is it that your team does day in, day out? So my team uh, is doing actually a various number of jobs, which is part of the uh, exciting part of the job. We don't do only visualization for the design department, as I think at a lot of OEM, uh, OEMs is taking place like that. Um, but we basically do everything that our skill set allows us to do, what we can mm -hmm. do to help the company growing and evolving and, and yeah, help basically every department in every field with computer graphics, 3D graphics, mm -hmm. be it file formats, be it uh, photography, doing videos. So basically everything that most of the 3D guys are also able to do on the side, not maybe very well, but mm -hmm. at least a little bit. And we can do everything um, yeah, to help the company grow. And a lot of these fields are getting much more professional now. So Basically, we're founding new fields everywhere, getting better at everything. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah, doing videos, doing photography, making our own assets. Um, and of course, also doing the visualization internal for the design department, which is the main job, mm -hmm. but also help marketing to yeah, come up with very short notice, flexible <laughs> communication uh, requirements as yeah. you do in a startup. Yeah, uh, as you do in a startup. Everything is short notice in, in that regard. But yeah. um, so very well. Like that, that gives us a good kind of starting point, I think. And we, you know, Eric and I, when we talk about these things all the time, and we talk to people, we get this kind of idea from a lot of the designers in particular that they're saying, you know, they're either digital guys uh, or they're the kind of clay guys. So mm. when it comes to the physical modeling, but. VR has been the kind of hype over the past few years in all different kinds of areas. And I think we can also include some kind of augmented reality with that. And um, and I do know that you guys at Byton have an app as well, which is an AR for the car and stuff like mm. that. But um, from your kind of current experience and from the moment that you started pretty much in, in, in Byton, how would, you, how would you say the importance of VR is within the company slash within the design department? Well, I think it's it's very important. Uh, it's not something that is in an experimental stage. I would say it, it became part of the daily business extremely quickly. I think probably 
quicker than any technology uh, before was adopted productively very, very quick. And for me, it was very interesting because uh, to be absolutely honest, I'm, I'm not the most, I'm not the most geeky VR guy. Like it's not, uh, or it wasn't from the beginning what I wanted to mm -hmm. do. Like I'm, I'm also interested in all fields of computer graphics, of course. Um, it was just that it became so, in, so important mm -hmm. because that's what, what people wanted to see every day because it really helped them Uh, with their creative work and, and shaping the car in that very early stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very satisfying to see how, how, people, how people work with it. And, mm -hmm. and basically that's how we took it from there. Mm -hmm. um, more or less adapting to the requirements, which of course is not always the most beautiful yeah. result, but, but that, that fits the process yeah. best. And how was the reaction of the different people involved. I mean, you know, we, we have the visualization artists in that kind of regard. We have the digital modelers, we have the clay modelers, we have the designers, of course, as well. How was it adopted by the people? Was there, you know, you had some people just like being, you know, in the sense of like, oh, I don't want to deal with this or I don't really want to do it. So they were quite adhesive to it. Probably some people would have said like, I really actually like it. Mm -hmm. But how, how was that for you to interact with all those different kind of people? And, um, How was it then further implemented into yeah. the whole process as, as you grow as a company? I think this is a very important point because I, I as I said, it's productive already very much, but the fight is still ongoing mm -hmm. as always. Like people have their, their own opinions about it. And of course there is the camp that want to hold to the traditional hardware process, mm -hmm. which is, I think, absolutely important. No question to that. Also, I think everyone that, that has something to say in our company believes in the classic mm -hmm uh clay and and hardware process but um there are also the people that actually follow the hype very much mm -hmm. and then i would say most of the people are somewhere in between um who found out over the time what's their personal benefit mm -hmm. from the technology and i think the designers are the ones that uh, benefit most from it and and actually the ones that always come to me when they want to see something new yeah. that they that they did i think the modelers they enjoy it very much but they also have uh, the capability of imagining mm -hmm. their own models uh, very well so i think for them the step is not as big as for the designers mm -hmm. who can really see in a very quick manner like from from one day to another mm -hmm. that he has an idea he draws it we have a quick poly modeling process mm -hmm. some some talented modelers do it very quickly and then they give it to me and then a few hours later they can they can see it in mm -hmm. vr with some shadows and shaders yeah. and And nice materials and and this is probably the quickest um digital prototyping process mm -hmm. um and they love it of course yeah. like it's it's always very pleasing to see a designer seeing his design for the first time in virtual reality because yeah. they usually I'm very excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they're always excited to see their, you know, their stuff in in any kind of environment. Of course, But, yeah. Um, so from the process, like you know, like. I have a little bit of access to design studios from time to time. And, you know, I see virtual reality a lot being used in interiors, especially with seating bucks and stuff like mm. that. But um, from from within Bytes and Design, uh, obviously not talking about details in that kind of sense, but who uses it most? Is it like the interior guys? Is it the exterior guys? Is it also color and trim being involved in it? Or, you know, how would you say the ratio of the usage of VR with, with the designers in particular? I would say mostly interior designers. Mm. Um, which is logical, of course, mm. it has the most benefit for them. Um, and then also color and trim, yeah, maybe not for, for like really fine texture details and advanced shading effects, but more for the overall shaping, the color scheme mm -hmm. of the car. Um, they really enjoy like to do, the, yeah, maybe just applying the two different big world colors, mm -hmm. like what is bright, what is dark, what are the, the main contrast lines you're, you're looking for. Um, they, they're very interested in that. And I would really say exterior design is, is probably the least practical application. So we, we hardly do that. Has, has that just to do because of, per, you know, perspectives that you have with the car or that, you know, the scale just doesn't fit perfectly well within, within a VR or how, how would you describe that? I would say it has a number of reasons. The first is that, yeah, the, the tracking environment is maybe not big enough. 
So we always limited to moving around with this digital yeah, yeah. controllers, which is uh, a little bit uncanny for mm -hmm. most of the people, even for the people that have done it some time. Um, second, the exterior is, is very reflective, mm -hmm. um, which is sometimes uh, with a low resolution and the real time um, render engines uh, leads to bad anti-aliasing. So it's mm -hmm. flickering a lot. You have a lot of Uh, pixel edges and and most of the people so the visual effect i would say is not as pleasing as you would mm -hmm. um, imagine it to be yeah. um, and then also just because i think an exterior is, is is something that we're all known to that we see every day on the street and if you see a very cleanly designed and rendered picture uh, we, we get a very good opinion about it so mm -hmm. i think i think the benefit is in the interior is, is much bigger when it really comes to, to roominess perception yeah. and, and ergonomic feeling of the different aspects of, of a complicated interior. Yeah. And from your, from your process, I mean, you know, like the design process is not just about like, you know, two weeks of sketching and then we do a little bit of modeling and stuff like that. But, you know, when you do a production car that takes years to kind of take shape and stuff like that, from your perspective, because you're moving so quick mm -hmm. in terms of showing a first you know, prototype pretty much going into production, second car coming pretty much straightforward. Um, how has the usage of VR increased in that process or maybe even decreased because mm. of, you know, more complicated processes, more engineering involvement and stuff yeah. like that? I would say it's exactly that. Um, it was most important at the beginning of uh, the not only the project, but at the founding of the company mm -hmm. because we started with a blank sheet of paper we didn't have any old models that we can took uh, take as a reference we didn't have any history mm. we basically had to design the car in empty space yeah. and uh, that's quite a challenge actually and um, that was the point where the tool was most helpful and when really every day the update was the most important thing like yeah. every day the designers wanted to see their changes Uh, wanted to move stuff around and, and really get a good feeling of it. And I think it actually really helped to, to gain speed in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we, especially in the beginning, also resources were limited and we did not have the capacities to do 10, uh, different ergonomy models mm -hmm. or, or seating works. And, and that was definitely helping. And then when it comes to detailing or just pure styling, when it's just like the door panel is there, you know, exactly where the armrest is going to be exactly where the display is going to be is it's much more about getting high quality renderings mm -hmm. and, and pictures to to really get the haptic and, and yeah. feeling about the design and not so much the proportions and and roominess perception yeah so it's like more than in an early on process it was more in an early on process and then there was i wouldn't say it stopped but it definitely become less mm -hmm. uh, also part that makes my job very interesting that that i'm always doing different processes and tools in different steps of the pipeline mm -hmm. um, doing much more refined images and then it comes to presentations of course yeah. you have to sell the design not only to the public but also to your own board yeah. and and to all the other departments and then also augmented reality was usually the tool of choice when it comes to presenting interiors mm -hmm. and you know the the interesting thing that we see nowadays is the technical advancement as well so we see you know, an HTC Vive and an Oculus getting higher resolution screens and stuff like that, you know, the computers, especially the graphics cards nowadays become more and more powerful. Would you then say in terms of virtual reality, it, it with this new technology, it actually finds its way to later processes as well? Because with, you know, certain kind of tools such as Substance nowadays, where you can do really, really high quality materials yeah. and stuff, you could technically say, well, maybe we don't need the renderings anymore we could, because we could say, the quality with the technology is now getting better. Do you think that's realistic or are we just not there yet? I would say it's realistic, but but not in the near future. That will probably take longer than, than you would think now. Mm -hmm. I think the, the improvements that we had the last years were really marginal. Mm -hmm. So the step from the from the HTC Vive, for example, to the Vive Pro, which really had a bigger resolution, mm -hmm. which was not so much of a game changer. Like all the time when we worked with it, we said, It's already so good. Imagine how how good it would be with better resolution. Yeah. And then HTC delivered just that. They delivered a high resolution in a very short time. And you can see that high resolution, but it doesn't change the experience mm -hmm. at all. We were hoping that, that the better resolution would lead to using it more in interface design. Mm -hmm. That you could actually do your, your 
um, prototypes, your UI UX prototypes in virtual reality, which we are currently not doing very much mm -hmm. because of the resolution, because you cannot okay. read text, you cannot clearly see detailed lines or, or these finer aspects of interface design. It's, mm -hmm. it helps to see, okay, maybe I can, I can see it. It's big enough. It's clear enough, but when it really comes to refining an interface, it, it doesn't mm -hmm. help at all. And, and I was hoping that I could solve that problem with the wife pro, but it, it didn't really help. It's definitely better, but it's, yeah. it's still not there yet. So what do you think is the future then in terms of we, when we talk about car design mm -hmm. and all the technical advancements we have, you know, uh, right behind us is the Genesis Essentia, which was pretty much done in 3d only. They only mm -hmm. had one, you know, um, one model to check pretty much if everything was all right, but it was pretty much done digitally. Mm -hmm. um, do you think the broad mass will be able to do that? And, you know, we, we have things such as gravity, which I know you guys are using to, like you're trying it out at the moment internally as well. Do you think that VR will just change in terms of the use so that you say like the designers will do a 3D sketch like, you know, within VR or uh, where do you see the future realistically in the next like, two, three, four, five years mm -hmm. with VR in a design department? I would say it will definitely change it. I think there's no question that it will change the way that people are designing cars. But I wouldn't say that it will be the only way mm -hmm. to design a car. I think it's with every new technology. You should not forget about the, the positive aspects of the old technologies yeah. and the old workflows. Um, and the good thing is that you can always do both. Yeah. I mean, we have, we have Photoshop and I don't know, a lot of sketching programs yeah. uh, already since years now and yeah. people are still drawing on paper. Yeah. And I think it's, it's the same thing with augmented reality. There will always be people who who are talented in, in directly working in uh, virtual reality. For example, we have a young designer who's really good at it and, mm. and he was the only person so far who actually did uh, a car sketch purely in virtual reality mm. and it, it was totally feasible. It was really good, well thought uh, sketch and, and good process, but for a lot of other people, it's not the right way to do it. So there will always be different approaches to different um, demands yeah but i think it will it will definitely help a lot yeah what well, do you think you know from from the perspective of you competing with the big boys bmw mercedes audi and stuff like mm. that do you think that virtual reality could actually help you to have a quicker process or like a quicker, a quicker progress in terms of how to develop your cars? Because I mean, obviously you, you're much smaller. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, the interaction is much quicker and like, you know, the, the hierarchy levels are not there yet in, in terms of just a company per se. But do you think that VR in the long term could also help you to kind of beat those guys in terms of speed? Or is that then still going back into like clay, for example, where you just, you know, need certain amount of time? Well, it should, it. it should. I think you, you cannot get uh, the amount of craftsmanship that people are looking for in a German design mm -hmm. car uh, without a good clay process. Mm -hmm. I think this will take a long time, but um, it definitely helped us to gain speed in the beginning. There's no question about it. We were really fast utilizing virtual reality, but of course uh, the big OEMs are also using it and they're also not stupid. And yeah. Uh, they also have smart people working there, <laughs> working on, on good processes and tools, and they usually have more budget. So I've seen an excellent example of a very cool virtual reality mm. seating bug that a big OEM did. Yeah. And of course, it's very impressive for those guys that are doing as well. So I think it will change the industry in general. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe we are able to benefit from it a little bit more because we don't have so much old processes that mm -hmm. people are sticking to, like old timelines and, and certain gateway that have to be fulfilled in a certain yeah. way. But uh, apart from that, I think everybody is using the technology to his, to his biggest advantage. Yeah. I mean, this is the interesting thing from what we see, because if we look into Alias, for example, Alias is a very, very much a car tool. Like there are some other industries that use it, but because it has a certain kind of price, it, let's say it's car only mm. and the kind of surfacing that is needed and stuff. but. Um, so there's very little interaction with other um, with other industries in that mm. sense. How, how is that for you guys with VR? I mean, you know, not just within the car industry. Like, you know, do you do you exchange? Like, do you have new plugins and stuff like that? Mm. Do you talk to the fashion industry? Do you talk to the retail industry and those kind of people to get new ideas how to use it? Or uh, how is the interaction within the community that then you know maybe an in, in industry such as the car industry can benefit from? Mm. Well, I think. 
the, the most interesting part is of course the game industry because yeah. virtual reality is, is coming from the game industry yeah. and has developed in the game industry i think it's probably the only example of an industry tool that for years the the most professional b2b companies didn't come up with a professional solution yeah. and then suddenly the consumer product was the way to go yeah. and a very like comparatively into in b2b business cheap product became the ultimate tool yeah um, I think that's that's absolutely interesting and probably the way where another industry already influenced the automotive mm -hmm. industry uh, to a very big amount. And it's still it's still the game industry where all the plugins and tools and workflows are coming from, which is interesting and sometimes also challenging because most of the tools we use, for example, when we use Unity or Unreal um, to to realize our visualizations, You, you see that it's not a tool that has been designed for automotive mm -hmm. industry, for heavy data, for cut data, um, also for the demands that we have by visualizing things very quickly. Like mm -hmm. we're not developing a game that has months and years of, of development yeah. time. I have maybe two hours to, to deliver yeah. something for a spontaneous presentation. Yeah. Uh, and all that, that has not been thought through. Uh, that's maybe the way that we can influence the game industry. And mm -hmm. I think it's already happening like Unity and Unreal. They're coming up with their own uh, cut importers yeah. and t tessellation algorithms and really try to push in that direction. And on the other hand, uh, automotive industry, I think, is completely changing their tool set. I think that software like real-time software mm -hmm. as it used to be used in the automotive industry will not be around anymore in the future like mm -hmm. this would probably die out like that that would be my thesis that that companies like vred and and delta gen will have a problem in the future because they cannot keep up with the OpenGL graphic development mm -hmm. of of the big engines i mean from that kind of perspective we know that especially alias would it comes from an autodesk background you know is is pushing to implement vred into alias um, yeah, they were kind of, you know, a lot of the modelers said like, you know, make it a proper hybrid program and stuff like that. Do you think that could be a solution to kind of say, we do a model, quick visualization within the modeling tool uh, for, for that kind of programs to survive? Because, I mean, I think VRED has the kind of really, really nice integration with Alias mm. and stuff like that. And obviously mm. uh, Delta Gen is part of the SOAR yeah. and stuff like that. So do you think that just like in the modeling so you have the the, the real time becomes actually part of the modeling per se mm -hmm. and that the, the role of the modeler changes a little bit yeah. but at the same time the role of the visualization artist changes in terms of then you know we're doing it with the unity we're doing it with um with um uh, unreal and that they have to program maybe a little bit as well from their own i think that's pipeline. that's that's a very realistic forecast like i think it's already happening alias integrated uh, virtual reality viewer mm -hmm. uh vred intelligent as well and i think that i mean we use that programs lot at the moment especially for the work in progress mm -hmm. visualizations that have to go quickly because you can directly import your alias model into vred and then directly show it in virtual reality without any further adjustment yeah. but then you're very limited uh, in tweaking it and and getting the ultimate presentation experience mm -hmm. that's the biggest downside of it and for for everything that that has to be a little bit more sophisticated we we then switch into unity to program our own functions and and presentation features and animations um, to make it fully interactive mm -hmm. and this is either this is the way to go that it's going to split in these two directions as it is right now or the the game engines will will really follow up by the whole data uh, converting mm -hmm. issues and and get also the leader in in that field because That's basically everything we, we use Delta Gen and VRED for at the moment to, to tessellate our data, to convert our data and not to show it. It's quite expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it's still the best tool for it. I mean, there's nothing comparably yeah. on the market. And it's still much, much better than, than what Unity and Unreal has come up with so far. Yeah. You said something very interesting earlier in terms of that within your role at Byton, and I think this makes it a little bit special within, let's say, the whole idea of be working in a startup is you have an involvement with the marketing team as well. And, you know, we all know that design and marketing, they love and hate each other at the same time. Mm. There's a lot of, uh, let's say, conflict, but also very, a lot of love for, for each other. Um, how, can we, how can we imagine, like, you know, the design team helping out marketing? Is it just, is it literally that you're going to do the job a marketing agency would do? Or um, what is it that exactly we can, we can imagine with that, that design or like the design department helps marketing with? I think it's much... I think it's much more, and this is something that we discuss uh, a lot about because 
it's not only probably we cannot deliver the highest quality mm -hmm. of, of animations and images for them because an, an agency that is really specialized in that mm -hmm. might be still better at that but we can also deliver a lot of information mm -hmm. and and also a much quicker process because usually a car is developed and then the surfaces are getting into engineering and then engineering at some point gives it to marketing mm. and then marketing gives it to an agency yeah. and then the agency does not really know where to get the information from for example for materials textures mm -hmm. uh, configuration variants and that's usually one of the biggest challenges that the agencies have or what also i uh, discovered when i was working for an agency mm -hmm. um, to to gather the important information and i think that's probably the biggest field where we can help out because we know the car in the very beginning yeah. we exactly know the product and and all the materials and we can also take care about product correctness yeah. and and therefore i think deliver a quicker process yeah from moving on a little bit you know or thinking further ahead because we you know we see the idea of virtual reality of augmented reality moving into industry 4.0 you know and all these kind of into engineering as well like different kind of ideas how this new technology could uh, you know could help the process as a whole do you see that or do you think that actually the, the the visualization department could outgrow a general kind of design idea mm -hmm. and become its own department and then literally be like almost like an internal supplier for all these other departments to kind of you know, have further advancements, further kind of new ideas that uh, that might help, you know, manufacturing, that might help a development process because, you know, we're talking very specific at the moment but mm -hmm. from everything that you've told us so far. Mm -hmm. It's like, there's almost no limit to it, you know? I think so. If, I mean, the question is then how you define it. I think the biggest, the biggest advantage is that we have is that we really love software mm -hmm. and, and technological advancement in general like in computer graphics yeah. and then of course we're probably the first ones who who really see changes for example when when everyone was starting to render with uh, graphic cards instead of cpus anymore uh, simulation was not doing it mm -hmm. and now it's coming also to the simulation field that that simulation software is, is run on the gpu mm -hmm. and now also for example with the new with the new nvidia chips and and the whole topic of real-time mm -hmm. ray tracing of course we are the first ones to think like Oh, they could be very interesting, for example, for reflection calculation mm -hmm. and ergonomic studies and, and improving um, these kind of, of things in a car because we, we usually get thrown that, that topic to yeah. like, give me a picture that shows all the reflections yeah. of the windshield. And uh, this is definitely part, like a lot of fields that, that come to mind where you could improve the whole process with computer graphics. Mm -hmm. Um, but then, of course, the other departments also have people who, who really are into software and, yeah. and changing things. And I think that the exchange, again, is probably the most important aspect to and improve the, the pipeline. And the bigger the company, the more complicated yeah. that will be um, yeah. in those regards. But so before we're going to finish this all off and, I, you know, to kind of come to an end, but I wanted to ask you something. Where do you see, in, especially in terms of a design department, the limitations Uh, of virtual reality, maybe also augmented reality. Mm. Uh, and of course, where do you think it just stops being helpful and it might become a liability mm. for the problem, you know, for the, for, the, for the project? I think augmented reality has a very clear downside. Usually when, when we deliver augmented reality for presentations, you realize that the people are not talking about the product anymore. Mm -hmm. They're only talking about the technology. So mm -hmm. the technology comes the main aspect of the presentation. Is it working? Is it not working? Is it good? Does it help? Like everybody's just talking about the tool and, and not about the product. Yeah. And that's something that's completely different with virtual, virtual reality. And that's why I like it much more because when you, when you show something to somebody in virtual reality, He maybe is awed first in the beginning by yeah. the virtual reality, but then immediately starts talking about the product, yeah. always. Like usually when we when we put the goggles on, on maybe our CEO or design chief, he's always like, oh, that looks very good. Amazing, you made a good progress there. But then he stops and talks about the product. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the biggest advantage of virtual reality over augmented reality. And then the biggest downside about virtual reality is that you do it only by yourself. Mm -hmm. You're always included from the environment and this is something very awkward for a lot of people and that's the biggest the biggest downside that that we experienced in especially bigger presentations mm -hmm. then when somebody puts on the goggles he's he's cut off from mm -hmm. the world and there's a lot of people around him 
waiting for him to say something smart. Yeah. And, and that's a very uncomfortable situation that especially people who are not used to it try to avoid. And then they actually don't even want to put it on at all or they want to get rid of it immediately and, and don't actually have the opportunity to enjoy it. Yeah. So I think when, when augmented reality and virtual reality really come together and you can have the, the best of the both worlds, yeah. like you're not alone anymore, you see your actual environment, but you also see the augmented yeah. virtual reality it will then be another big step to, to improve it. So what would that next step be? Would it be a hologram? Uh, well, maybe a perceived hologram, but mm -hmm. I think what, what the HoloLens and, and other solutions like the Meta are already proposing that you, that you have the virtual reality goggle on and still see uh, the real environment uh, would, would definitely help. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, like minor limitations, like cables and, mm. and tracking size. Or but backpacks. That or backpacks. backpacks. I think it's nothing that, that you or that we worry about too much because this, this is going to improve anyway and, yeah. and probably faster than, than the other problems. Cool. Yeah. All right. So um, I'm going to be very, very excited to see what's going to happen with all of that. Because, you know, like uh, we, we have all these discussions, especially with clay modelers that are worried about the digital side. But I think, you know, there will always be a physical model, but, you know, we will probably see more technological advancement, mm. uh, especially within the car industry. And probably the car industry will want to be the last ones to pick up uh, yeah. on everything. But yeah. Um, yeah, thank you very much for coming, for, for joining us today, Quirin. Of and course. Um, yeah, so if you uh, ever want to get in touch with Quirin, you'll find him on LinkedIn, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, we will obviously link you with all everything, you know, we will we will mention you on, on Instagram and stuff like that as well. So if you're ever interested in having a further conversation with him, uh, you will get the opportunity and chance to do that and uh, yeah so thank you very much my friend for coming thank you it's for having a, me always a pleasure and uh, yeah we want to thank you for listening as well and if you have any questions any comments you know anything that you would like to ask us for, for you know, certain kind of other special episodes in the future uh, do DM us do send us messages whatever you want us you know to any kind of official kind of way we have uh, with social media email, whatever. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening. And uh, we will hear each other very, very soon. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you.